Johnson Mark friends. I am super excited to share a new lesson with you today. I've been excited about this all day. Um, actually, I've been thinking about it this morning since I had my coffee. We're actually going to be painting today with some things that I think that you all have around your kitchen. We're going to be using coffee, tea, and hot chocolate. So uh, we're going to create some painting uh, known as coffee art. They're actually several well-known artists working in this medium um, today. Um, one of them's name, uh, there's actually a couple of them. These two work together. Their names are Angel Sarkella and Andrew Sauer. And I will make sure I give you a link to um, some of their work so you can explore that after uh, the lesson. They have some amazing, amazing artwork. Um, they've been working in this medium for 10 years um, and they use a special layering technique where they layer up the coffee on the canvas to create um, interesting value. There's also an artist known as Pornchai Letha Marisi, and I hope I'm saying his name right. I, I worked really hard to look it up and I didn't find anything on how to pronounce it, um, but he actually paints in open air and creates these coffee paintings, meaning he goes outside and he does his paintings just like the French artists during the Impressionist period worked. It's called plein air painting. Um, and so I'll give you a little information on that as well as we go on. Um, later on, you're going to see these techniques demonstrated the plein air portion, but for now, we're going to see what we can do right here at our kitchen table. Gather some things up, some coffee, some tea, um, some hot cocoa. All you need is just a little bit in the bottom of a cup. Um, it needs to be hot in order for it to dissolve the tea or the coffee grounds. Um, or the hot cocoa. Um, and then all you're gonna do is stir it up in your cup, just let it kind of dissolve in there. And you'll want some paper, thicker is better because you're painting, you've got something wet. If you don't have thick paper though, it works just fine. I've been using the backs of things to practice. You'll also wanna gather up probably a couple of paint brushes if you have them. Also, any kinds of black pens or markers that you might have around. Um, a pencil would work, even a kitchen straw or some Q-tips or anything else that you think you might be able to try painting with. I'd love to see you guys experiment with some, some really cool kitchen stuff, things that you could make paint with or things that you could use to apply paint to your um, artwork. Really excited to see what you come up with. All right, in just a minute, we'll be back with your drawing. Hey, artists, or awesome artists, right? I've got my daughter Charlotte here with me. Are you ready to paint? Yeah, what are we going to be painting today? Do you want to show them? What is it called? Um, maybe, I don't know. maybe peek out and tell them. It's a desert. Desert hair. A desert hair. And I know that our second graders this week are doing some reading about desert hairs, right? Some yeah. desert animals and how they are adapted to their habitat. And so you're going to learn about a desert hair. But we're going to paint one today with, what are we painting with? Coffee. Wait, no, that's not coffee. Coffee. Tea. Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. All righty, we're gonna get started. Are we ready? Today we're gonna draw a desert hair. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put a dot at the bottom in the middle. Just a little one. In, in the, the middle. Right in the middle. Just to find the middle for us. Okay. Minus. Yep. And just to the right of that. Right, this is my right. Yeah, you got it, that's your right. <laughs> we're gonna go up, about halfway up the paper. And kind of towards that. Stop. Perfect. And the next side, yep. I'm ahead of you. I don't even need you. Oh well. Now don't meet them in the middle. You're gonna let them be apart a little. Yeah. And wiggly lines are okay because we're gonna make them super furry. Okay? It's gonna be like yeah, so we're not gonna worry about that. The next thing that we're gonna do is right between these two lines here, we're gonna make just a small line straight down. Perfect. On top of that line, you're going to make a U. Oh, I'm skilled at this. <laughs> you are skilled at this. Okay, then you're going to go from your little line down, you're going to bop him on the shoulder and then come up. 
connected at the nose. Perfect. And then you're going to go ahead from that center line again. Charlotte's already done it for us. Come up and around to the nose again. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to give him eyes. And we're going to put those right on top of his cheeks. So you're going to make nice circles for his eyes. Good. Can you give him pupils inside of there? Those are going to be like a half circle. And, we can and you can color them in if you want to. Yep. Good. Okay, so far so good? It looks adorable. It looks adorable, it does. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to make some really big ears. We're going to start from his eye. So we're going to start from here and go up with kind of a curved line and stop at the top of your paper. Desert hair has really big ears. And you're going to do the same thing off of the other eye. Perfect. So it's like yeah, then what you're going to do is finish them off as ears. You're going to start here and go up and finish it off as an ear. Here? Yep, that's perfect. And then up. Yep. Don't forget Same to thing do on the other side. whiskers and the dots. Oh, I won't. Then the next thing you need to do, or the final, eh, not really the final thing, but we're going to connect it with lots of furry hair in the middle here. Okay, I think just a couple more finishing touches and we'll be done with our drawing part so we can get to our coffee painting. We're gonna add in lots of furry fur all along him. And you can use little lines like this. You can use scribbles, but he's got lots of furry fur. Yep, the oh. messier the better, right? Looks like I'm doing some weird Messier the better. You're going to go up his ears and everything. Oh, we need to give him some insides to his ears. So we need to make one more line that goes from here up. Nope, from here up. You got it. And then from here up. Perfect. That'll make his ears look like they have an inside and an outside. And then the dots. Yep, we'll do his whiskers last. Those will be the finishing touches. So get them nice and furry first. You ready? No. We don't have to do every fur, just kind of like I did. Just here and there. Whoa. Oh, no, nope. little furs, come on. Little furs, my friend. <laughs> All right, let's skip ahead to the whiskers. We can go back to this, okay? So we're gonna give him what looks like little freckles, three or four little freckles on either side of his cheeks. And then we're going to add um, whiskers. And I was showing Charlotte, you're gonna kind of press down at first, and then as you flick your hand, you're gonna lift it up as you go, and it will make them look like hair. Oh, one's next to his eyeball. That's going to be and a This treat. guy's really hairy. He's got some long whiskers. Okay. That one's next to his eyelid. That's okay. Uh, let's come down this way, maybe. This one <laughs> is going to be on if, if that's how you want it, then that's fine. There you go. Are we good now? Yeah. Yes? Okay. All right. Are we ready to paint? No. Not ready to paint? Sure. What? Let's get to painting. Perfect. All right, we're going to start with working with the T first. That's our lightest, um, our lightest paint. I guess we'll call it paint for today. Here's yours. And we're kind of just going to paint all of him, but we're going to use kind of hairy strokes. We're not going to worry about any drips or dribbles because that kind of looks, I kind of like the way that looks. Go ahead, give it a try. It smells weird. We're just giving him kind of a base color for our rabbit. It does smell weird. I think it smells amazing. This is the best smelling artwork that you probably you'll ever make. You don't like the smell? No, it's disgusting. You think it's disgusting. Mm, wait until we get to the hot chocolate. I think you'll like that Yeah, one. the hot chocolate is going to be the best. And that's going to be where we put all the dark creases and stuff. How am I learning all these art crazy words? Red, how are you? I'm going to leave a spot on his nose white to um, have a highlight. Um, you might leave parts of his ears, might have some light reflected on them. Um, I am going to make under his chin pretty dark, so make sure that's there. 
Once you've kind of filled in the areas with the tea that you want to have some color, we're gonna go to our next darkest thing, which is our coffee. Are you ready? No. All right, well, I'm gonna move on to the coffee while she finishes up on the tea and then you can just catch up. Coffee's gonna be the grossest one. It's gross. It is a little gross. You'll find that the grounds kind of hang out in the bottom. That's also where kind of the darkest color um, or the pigment that you're gonna get is. I just like leave the grounds right on my paper and then brush them off later on. Um, but coffee is a little darker than the tea. So you can use that to create shadow under his chin. Kind of tip it up. If you don't dig into the bottom, you won't get quite so many grounds. Also, you might want to wait until your um, desert hair dries a little bit. Uh, the tea layer dries a little bit before you put on your coffee layer. It's so cornerous dry. Yeah, per perfect. Um, desert hairs are what we're painting today. They're not just any old rabbit. They're actually different than rabbits. Um, they look similar, but there's also some big differences. Um, they are much larger than a rabbit, and they have much longer ears than a rabbit does. And let's see. Young hairs are called leverets. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is that funny? You're so silly. Um, and then let's see, a group of them is called a drove, um, but it's not very frequent that you find them in a huge group because typically they just hang out alone or with one other um, hair. So they're kind of uh, loners but they are very, very fast. You find them out in the desert and they can they can hop or yeah, they can move it up to 72 miles per hour Whoa, that is fast. Um, if they are if they mean business and they're trying to move quickly. All right, I think I am about done with that. Another thing you can kind of do that I like to do is add little splatters and I just tap my paintbrush rather than flinging it your mom or dad or whoever's at home with you right now, grandma, grandpa, auntie. Um, would appreciate you not flinging this across their kitchen. So I just tap it and that directs the splatters right down. Yep, onto the page. I think it kind of makes it look cool. Um, I'm not rinsing with water in between. I'm just wiping it on a paper towel and then moving on to my next one. All the colors are brown, so it's not gonna mix any colors on you. Um, now I'm gonna move on to the hot chocolate. This is our darkest one, okay? And down in the bottom is where the chocolate's hanging out. So that's our super darkest. So if you want really dark, you gotta dig to the bottom. Um, and I'm just using that to go in and create some shadows. Yeah, that's And you'll have to just experiment with it a little bit and see what works for you. But I think the inside of his ears I'd like to be a little bit darker because they kind of dip in. I'm just going to lick Whoa. this drawing. I'm You're going to lick the drawing? Yeah. Oh, goodness. I don't know about that. But I wouldn't like the coffee in there. That'd be yeah, I was going to say you'll get coffee in your mouth. Uh, um, remember, we're trying to make underneath... In his chin area, the darkest. And we're just continuing to add that texture, that Whoa. fur. You can try some different tools also. If you don't have a paintbrush, you can try using a Q-tip, um, okay. which is kind of cool. You can kind of fill them in with dots. Or you can use a Q-tip afterwards to kind of add little polka dots in the background. Um, and you just do the same thing. You just dip it straight in and just like you would expect. Can I use a Q-tip? Okay, you can use a Q-tip. I've got a couple here. There you go. Give it a try and see what you think. Other things that you can use um, that kind of create neat um, designs. You can drip a big glob onto your paper and then you could use a straw and blow it. Can and that I... creates kind of interesting lines and things. Ooh, um, you can use your straw and dip it down deep into your hot chocolate where that chocolate's hanging out at the bottom. And then put it on your paper and it will make drips. They look like gelatin cubes or something like. You can blow those. You're messy at this. Alright. Just... I think I am just about done here with my hair. Um, how are you doing? Oh, 
awesome. Sounds like we're here. Right. Right. Well, from here, from our desert hair, we're going to move on to some plein air painting out in the forest. And I'm going to bring Sophia to come and work with me. And we're going to paint um, some ponderosa pines. Hope you'll join us. Hey guys, welcome to Payson again. Um, we are in the middle of a ponderosa forest and we're going to draw some, well, we're going to paint some ponderosa pines today and talk a little bit about them. And we're going to use something unusual uh, in our painting today, something I think that you may have in your kitchens at home. And so I was thinking this might be a cool activity for you in your family. Um, I've got Sophia here with me today. She's going to be painting alongside me. And basically what we're going to be using is some regular plain old black tea. It's a uh, just a plain old kitchen tea bag. And we've dipped it in some hot water and it's soaking. We've stirred it up a little. And it just takes a tiny bit of water. I used plastic cups so you can kind of see how little we have in there. Um, we took some coffee grounds from our kitchen, just like a teaspoon, and diluted them in um, super hot water. And then my personal favorite, hot cocoa. Hot cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> and so we've mixed these up, and this is going to create what we call a monochromatic painting, meaning all in one color. Um, it will have different values and tones, so some of it will be lighter, some of it will be darker based on what you're using and how much you're using of it, um, but it will all be in different color browns. Um, and so, um, let's get started. Right, guys we are gonna get busy painting here and um, like I mentioned we've got three cups and we've got tea in this one just black tea we've got coffee mixed up in this one with some hot water and some cocoa in some hot water and we're gonna make a monochromatic um, painting and you'll notice that I don't really have any water cup to rinse my brush or anything like that we're using just minimal supplies that you can easily find if you're camping or even um, at home with no art supplies. Um, we do have paintbrushes and our paper. Our paper is a little bit thicker um, so that it holds uh, the paint. So um, that might be something to look for around your house. And then just a paper towel because in between we may need to clean off or dry our brushes. Um, we are gonna do, there's two kinds of paintings that you can do. You can do a painting that's of an exact subject or you can go out and just be a detective, learn a lot about the subject that you're painting and then sort of paint your own ideas. And so while we're looking at all these ponderosas, there's not one specific tree that I'm going to be painting. Um, I'm just gonna paint sort of a, a feeling of what the woods are like. Um, so you don't have to be sitting in the forest to create a pine tree painting. Um, so we're gonna get started by creating just the background and we're gonna start with a tea that tends to be the lightest of the three um, browns that we get and we're just going to dip in and I'm going to create kind of a diagonal a little bit of mountainy uh, base and I'm not going to rub it into my paper too much I'm just going to kind of let it sit on the top and we'll let it dry a couple seconds in between um, layers because we're going to have to layer this up okay and we're just going to put it on sort of the bottom half of the paper and you can just lay it in kind of spotty. And it just gives your tree something to sit on. And I'm going to kind of leave mine like that. Um, Ponder Ponderosa pine trees are really, really cool. We actually have the largest um, Ponderosa pine forest in the world here between Payson and Flagstaff. So it's definitely something you should get out to see. Ponderosa pines are really, really awesome because they grow incredibly tall. Um, and their bark tends to be virtually fire resistant. Um, they, I love painting them because they tend to only have branches up nearing the top and the branches grow either uh, horizontal right out from the ground, like horizontal parallel to the ground, or they grow up towards the sky and they're super spotty. They have super long pine needles. This is the cone that comes off of them. Um, and 
I just think they're really interesting. They have super um, tall trunks. And then we're gonna go on to the next color here. And if you'll notice if you dig down into the bottom is where really the um, thickest pigment is. If you want a light color, you would stay up towards the surface of your mixture. If you want a dark color, you want to go down towards the bottom. The coffee does have a lot of grounds in it, and those just brush off when you're done with your painting. So I'm just going to kind of create the ground that they're actually sitting on. So back here we've got our mountains, and now I'm just creating ground for them to sit on. I'm just kind of going in and creating that woodsy earthy that looks really cool yeah you might need a paper towel too to just kind of catch any drips and you'll have to hold your paper flat so that it doesn't run um, i'm also with my coffee going to go ahead and start making some of these long trunks and i'm just going to go up really lightly and they don't have to be perfect that's what i love about these trees i'm going to make this uh, trunk bigger at this side here like we're closest to him um, so we're kind of surrounded and maybe these go off into the distance a bit. Uh, we'll have so many branches that it won't even really matter a ton. Okay, so we're going to let that dry for a minute. Perfect. Oh, I like that. Maybe try one from the ground up so you can kind of flick it and get it to come to a point. Yeah, see how it makes the trunk thicker down here and yeah. smaller as it goes up. Perfect. You got it. You're starting to see a pine forest. So then what you would do is let this dry a little bit. Um, we'll have some fancy editing in here, I'm assuming, <laughs> to help um, so you don't have to watch uh, paint dry, shall we say. All right, so now that that has dried a little, basically what you want to look for is, is there any beads of water just kind of sitting on the surface? It doesn't have to be completely dry, but we know when we put two colors that are wet next to each other, they just kind of bleed together and make kind of a messy blotch. So we want to give it time so that we're not painting on wet areas. And I'm going to go back into that, either the coffee or the tea, and start to develop some branches here. I'm going to start more than halfway up my tree. And I'm gonna make sure my shorter branches are reaching up to the sky. And as I go down the tree, they're going to get wider out. Probably down here nearing the base of the trunk, you're just gonna have little snapped off branches. If you look off into the distance here um, or in the video earlier, you can kind of notice where they've just got little snapped off branches. And so that's what we're adding here. We'll go in with more detail afterwards with our hot chocolate, which is my favorite one to paint with. So let's give it a go here. I kind of like the tea too, because it doesn't have those coffee grounds in it. But basically little short branches up towards the top. And as you come down, they're going to get bigger and they're going to go more horizontal. Kind of see? Not really. Did y'all hear that? She doesn't really see. We'll define it. It's going to look just kind of messy at first. You're just kind of blocking out where your tree branches are going to be. And um, the tea is super light. Yeah, I would just leave it. Um, so it's really forgiving. And you're just going to build on it. Just going to kind of give substance to our trees. Substance. She likes that word. Hmm. And as we go down, those branches become parallel to the ground. And we might just have a few little sticks that kind of stick out the sides of the tree. And then I'm going to go into our darker color to really define the branches. Right now what we've got is kind of a blob. Um, what we're going to do with the hot chocolate is it's much darker, um, same brown tone, but much darker, much thicker. It will allow us to draw our tree in a little bit better. This just gives us that base of shading. So the part that you guys don't really get to see is that we're having to take some time in between um, layers that we're adding to let it dry so that it doesn't all just get muddy and go together. And that's really important when you're making something monochromatic and you only have one color. Um, when you have two colors, it's important also because they can bleed and make a new color. But um, this you're really having to build on top of each color to make it darker. So it's really important that you stop and you're creating layers. Um, so we've stopped and waited for a minute and basically I was telling, um, Sophia, you just have to be careful. There's no real beads of, uh, water 
And if there are, and you're ready to move on, you really should be able to just dab it with a paper towel and get that off. All right, so we're gonna go in with our last one. Now, the hot cocoa has been my favorite because it actually separates out a little. And down in the bottom is the thick chocolatey part that we use last. Oh, and, oh, wow. <laughs> are you getting that? <laughs> <laughs> and in the top is the more liquidy, lighter brown color. So when you're looking to um, define things, you can kind of dig down deep and you kind of get a really thick that. Uh, chocolatey layer that's fun to paint with. That. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remember we've got a light source. We're out in the forest. So everything is going to have a shadow on one side. Use your paper towel and it's all going to be on the same side of each tree. And so that's really important. And that's what starts to make these look round. It's kind of cold out here. My hot chocolate is kind of gloppy. Okay, and that kind of creates the, the shadow or the roundness to the tree. And so I'm just going to each tree I have to kind of scrape the chunks off here. And so then I've got my shadows underneath each tree. And then I'm going to go into the branches and actually add the details. And the hot chocolate is thick, so it's a little easier to control too than that watery tea was. And so you're able to um, draw with it a little bit more than you might have been able to with the tea or coffee. And you can give some texture to the trunk. And I'm not going to worry too much. My shadow isn't very dark right now. I can go back in afterwards and darken that up a bit um, by adding another layer on top. So even though this is my darkest um, paint color, I guess we could call it paint, um, you want to be up on the tip of your brush to make those fine lines. So stand your brush up more and paint right on the point of it, almost like you're drawing. Um, but you can make it darker by going over it a second time. So we're just going to go in and define those branches. We're going to use um, not solid lines, just kind of jumpy, skippy, messy lines like a tree or in nature. And you're just going to kind of wiggle your brush around and it might not seem like you're making a tree. When you're done, you may be surprised. It probably will look more like a tree than you expected. I'm just going to add some of those branches that kind of come out at the end here as it goes towards the ground. Yep, very on the very, very tip, Sophia. Perfect. And mine, I'm, I've got a fatter paintbrush, maybe fatter than I need with this tiny painting. Um, I do paint really small when I'm out in the woods because I'm able to carry it in a very small little pouch that I keep all my things in. And that way I can just keep it with me and whether I plan on painting or not, I've always got it. Um, so if that's something you're interested in doing, you might wanna cut some small paper for yourself and then just get a little pencil pouch. And all you need is a little watercolor brush. Um, Sophia's brush is interesting because it holds water inside of it. And you can actually, uh, you can use markers, water soluble markers, and then dilute them using the paintbrush. Are you painting or eating? Finished. <laughs> okay, so let it dry a bit. Once you get to a place where you think you've finished, let it dry, and then you're just going to go back in and again go over it and add more details. Another thing that you can do to finalize details in the very end is to go back in with a Sharpie and kind of give it the really, really fine details. I also use a really light touch and go down and drag my brush up a little to give it some grass or a brush. It gives it kind of a woodsy feel. Um, but really lightly, you wanna stay right up on the tip of your brush so that you have tiny strokes instead of, those actually got a little larger than I wanted. I like that. And so I'll probably let this dry a little bit more, come back and do one final layer of finishing touches maybe using Sophia's really tiny fine point brush. Um, and then I'll show you the finished one. 
Okay, so we're going to go in for our last round here, and I'm going to actually tilt the cup and try and get right down in where the chocolate is, because that's going to be our darkest. We're going to go back into our shadows just a little. I'm also using Sophia's smaller brush so I can get some tighter details here. Um, add more grass in, finish the trunks out. And basically, I'm just going back in and kind of firming up what's already there. I've already done all the, the hard work. Now it's kind of the fun part where it starts to come together. And like I said, your darkest color brown is going to be at the bottom of that, that cup of cocoa. So you may have to really dig down there um, to find it. You may have to tip your cup a little bit. And then just go back. Whoops! And what we can do with our paper towel is just dip it in there and it will just kind of soak up. Without rubbing or anything, we'll just drop it on. just about finished with this guy and the cool thing about this is it smells amazing and it will dry um, fairly nicely almost like a watercolor um, I've got some artists for you to look at that actually this is their medium of choice uh, they paint with coffees and teas and so I will make sure that you get the link to those as well in the video um, but I'll show you a couple finished ones that I completed that are already dry and one that I went in with Sharpie as well. Okay, so I added some splatters in this for details. And this one I've added Sharpies too. 